شاهنامه استوریز The Seven Labors of Rustam هفت خانه رستم The Battle with the White Deev Part 3 The seventh Khan is full of visual complexities and contradictions. In addition to being the pictorial symbol of the victory of good over evil, perhaps its central paradox that may come as a surprise is that the white div is in fact not white. As we were told, upon entering the lair, Rustam had trouble finding his adversary within the pitch black interior. Ferdowsi describes the div as having a face dark like the night and hair white like milk. Which some texts substitute with the word barf or snow. The div's darkness that merges with that of the cave is further implied in his approaching Rostam like a black mountain. Notwithstanding the poet's explicit statement that the white div is dark-skinned, the artistic response to the challenge of painting a swarthy demon in the pitch blackness of a cave and the white div's very name provided the poetic license and artistic solution for the demon to be depicted as white. As such, he is always light-skinned, usually white or grey, an example of Ferdowsi's text not being adhered to at a visual necessity. In this extraordinary painting, the artist has managed both to conform to Ferdowsi's text as well as to conjure up the force of the struggle. The tension of the tug is communicated by the rocks, tree and whirling clouds that strain and thrash forward and away from the centre where the dark-skinned demon recedes and sinks into the empty cave. The goriness of the battle represented by the bright red blood spewing from the severed knee. This painting is the very rare occasion whereby the artist adheres most closely to Ferdowsi's description of the white div and has painted him black. In order to achieve that, however, he has had to do away with the cave so that he can be faithful to the break line just above Rakhsh's head that reads Jigarash as Tanetire Birun Keshid. He tore his liver out of the dark body. The eeriness of the cave interior described by Ferdowsi is captured by the piled up heads of the rock grotesques that silently observe the horror below. As Rostam tears out the div's liver in one of several illustrations of the actual extraction of the organ, the shock of the pain is communicated by his long frozen fingers and bugged out eyes that are mirrored by the bright red flowers that bolt up amid their sharp, startled leaves. Following the violent struggle, Rostam raised the demon's maimed and weakened body and hurled it to the ground, after which he stabbed him and pulled out his liver. He then untied Ulad and gave him the miracle cure to take to Kekovus, whereupon the Shah's eyesight and that of his soldiers were restored. The choice of the liver as the organ from which blood was to be dropped into the eyes of Kekovus and his troops to break their spell of blindness is symbolic. The healing organ is ambiguous as the Persian word jigar can be translated both as liver and heart and indeed most paintings have Rostam's dagger thrust at the level of the heart rather than the abdomen where the liver would be. Furthermore, the Persian word for heart, del, that is mentioned by K. Corvus, has a softer, more tender connotation, whereas in this case, the word jigar has a raw intensity that befits the excruciating physical pain as well as the miracle cure whose three drops of blood banish the blindness. 
Paradoxically, the actual extraction of this critical organ, that is the whole purpose of the Hafthorn, was depicted in but a handful of the earliest illustrated copies of the Shahnameh, and only once thereafter. That is to say, the Hafthorn's very climax is a virtually unrepresented moment in the pictorial tradition, even though the breakline verse above the majority of the paintings specifies it. This similarly spine-chilling early and rare depiction of Rostam pulling out the Dives' liver conjures up the horrors of the dark, claustrophobic cavern beneath piles of stifling skulls and spirits that writhe and close in on them. Here, as expected, the breakline verse above Ulard's head describes the action. The triumphant Rostam watches as the demon throws back his head and howls, his flaming red and orange eyelids accentuating his agony that is further dramatized by the bird-like feet that dig into the ground, one tense and rigid, the other limp and bleeding in his hand. Finally, in the only known example of its kind, the dismembered and disemboweled white deep stares resignedly as Rostam holds up the extracted organ over the gaping hole in the demon's stomach. Text and story can constitute two separate and often divergent narratives where illustrations are not just representations of a text but create their own version of the story. One such apparition is that of Rostam's helmet. Within the cave, Rostam is mostly depicted with his usual accoutrements of a leopard skin helmet and tiger skin robe. As we shall see in Rostam's battle with Akvan Div, Rostam's attire is magic, and according to legend, the tiger skin was said to afford him superhuman powers. As we have seen in the course of the illustrations of the half Khan, Rostam's headgear changes. Ferdosi tells us that Rostam has an iron helmet, a feature that is depicted throughout the 14th century and often with the addition of ear guards. But the style changes by the 16th century and the iron helmet is often replaced by a spotted snow leopard head embellished with a plume, complete with eyes that express the mood of the moment. While for the most part the leopard's head is quite distinct and different from the div, a frequent and incorrect association that entered popular narrative, probably through live performances, and can be seen at times in paintings from the 20th century onwards, is that it is the white div's head that Rostam is wearing. While it is fancied that having killed the white div and pulled out his liver, Rostam then cut off his head and wore it thereafter as a helmet, this painting has even fabricated the step of Rostam slitting the white div's throat. This invention has been crudely interpreted in this melodramatic Rajar painting, where, in a simultaneous depiction of consecutive events, a floating, sad, decapitated div head, having grown sharp horns, has crash-landed on Rostam's head, squinting upon impact. Rostam's headgear in all illustrations clearly shows that while it is white and spotted, it is a leopard head. Not only does Rostam not cut off the white thief's head, but is seen wearing the leopard head helmet long before the seven labors, and most often as he is battling the white div, whose head is always intact and squarely on his head. Most importantly, neither is mentioned by Ferdosi. Furthermore, in the sixth Han, where Rostam does indeed twist off Div Arjang's head, he throws it into the crowd of the demon warriors. As violent and gory as the seventh Han is, Rostam's battle with the white Div is neither arbitrary nor for glory.
The killing symbolizes the victory of good over evil and the extraction of the liver is necessary to save the foolish king's eyesight. In the next video, we shall delve into the psychological nuances of the relationship between Rostam and the White Deev as each battles for his life.